Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Blood Phantom 81. So I wanted to make a video because I actually forgot to make my 300K video when I actually hit 300K like last week. And then the market kind of corrected and then I forgot to make it as I mentioned. So I have the opportunity today. So I'm making it. Um, so yeah, my account hit 300K. Um, I think the last time I made a 100K video, which by the way, I'm gonna make a 100K video every time my account hits a new 100K milestone. And I think the last one came like at the on the first day of October or sometime around there. Um, so now we're at 300K, which is crazy. Unfortunately, the market's been rallying pretty well ever since um, October. I'm very happy that the market rallied today because to be honest, um, it caught me off guard a little bit, the fact that we dropped. Um, so why don't we go ahead and take a look at the overall market. Um, so why I think it's potentially treacherous right now is basically for a pretty um, traditional overbought signal, which is percentage above the 200-day moving average. And so we hit about 17, 18, um, not too long ago. And um, and so I, I did manage to take some profits around here, but not nearly enough. And then as soon as we started dropping, I was pretty concerned because I didn't really have too much cash to average down. And it just it wasn't a good feeling. And so I'm very happy that the market actually rallied today. Um, hopefully it can keep it going on the shorter term hourly time frame. We recaptured the 200 premium average, which is the green line. So hopefully we can um, keep using that as support, potentially even making a higher high. But I am looking to take um, a little bit more profits little by little as we start to creep higher. Um, and so, yeah, that's pretty much the strategy going forward. The last thing I'll say is that um, hitting 300K is not nearly as exciting as I thought it would be. Um, and I think the next milestone that would actually make me pretty excited is, is a million, if I'm being completely honest. I don't think it's a situation in which like I'm just getting used to these numbers and I won't ever be excited again. I genuinely think that at a million dollars, like I'll probably be like extremely happy um, for the for a moment at least. And so yeah, so it's just a small step on my way to a million dollars. I'm happy that at least I have a community that's like, you know, with me for the journey. I think it's pretty cool that we have this channel running. So um, yeah, thank you guys for the support. Um, so yeah, the other thing I want to talk about is that I actually bought GameStop stock. Speaking of support, um, so let's go ahead and take a look at my position. I bought some literally right before after hours closed. Um, and so my average cost is here at about 176. I considered buying like, you know, five shares in total, but I was like, you know, that's a little bit much. Um, so I just stuck here at two shares. Now, why did I buy GameStop stock? Is it because I hope that this will 10x or 20x or whatever go to the moon? No, um, not that I'm bearish on it, right? It's just that I love the community Wall Street bets and something about hearing Jordan Belfort uh, talk about it. Like I think even Mark Cuban talked about it, but especially Jordan Belfort, for some reason, that made me kind of excited to the point where I actually... Um, just ended up buying some shares to support them. You know, they're talking about holding the line. And I've thought about how much joy the Wall Street Bets community gives me. And I just wanted to stand by them, basically. So whether this is actually um, making any real progress or, you know, making any positive change just by holding um, is something that I cannot answer. But uh, on the off chance that it is, that was worth it enough for me to buy some shares. So I, I really don't care if these shares go back to $10 or whatever. I really, really don't care. I promise that I don't care. Um, but uh, yeah, to me, it's just kind of like um, support and entertainment. On that note, let's go ahead and talk about Wall Street Bets. So I alluded to this earlier, but I actually love the Wall Street Bets community. I don't think I've talked about it on my YouTube channel, but I certainly have on other live streams. The key reasons why I love Wall Street Bets are basically two reasons. Uh, number one is the humility aspect. So Wall Street Bets acknowledges what they don't know when they're actually doing it. And you won't find that kind of humility. On other investing subreddits like um, slash r slash stocks or slash r slash investing, people say whatever they say, but with like the utmost confidence. Um, and that just doesn't vibe too well with me. Um, and so at least in Wall Street Bets, even if they're doing crazy things, they acknowledge that it's a crazy thing, right? And they, they still do it anyway. Um, the other thing is actually, that's, that's maybe three reasons. The other reason is um, sort of the carefree attitude of you only live once, which is absolutely true, right? Like uh, people can do whatever they want with their money. And the fact that 
there doing these crazy things is extremely entertaining. Um, a lot of people hit the home run, right? Um, for every person that hits the home run, there's probably like 20,000 that completely wipe out their accounts. Um, but it's still really fun to see. And like, you still get some ideas from it, right? Like, I'm not saying I'm ever going to go uh, all out on, on some pretty um, FDs, as they call them. I'm not saying I'm ever going to do that, right? But uh, you still get some ideas of, of, you know, risk to reward. You get some ideas of like investing in speculation and the importance of that even if it's just a small portion of your portfolio. So like there's a lot of lessons to be learned here, which I think people don't really acknowledge. And the third reason, perhaps the most important reason is the innovation. So on Wall Street bets, they are constantly innovating. And a big reason for that is the acceptance of crazy ideas. There's no one that, you know, makes fun. I mean, you're going to get made fun of if you say something stupid, but um, you're not going to get like, turned away or like you know your post deleted or something if you post an extremely crazy idea right that there's a chance that people actually vibe with that um crazy idea i think that the infinite leverage loophole was actually made popular because of wall street bets i'm not sure if it was specifically discovered on wall street bets but that as well as a few other issues that robin hood had at the time were exposed through wall street bets and it forced robin hood to become a better broker Little by little, obviously, right? They um, they have a long ways to go. They're probably one of the newest brokers out there. Um, and there's still some issues that are being discovered. And the other thing, which is the elephant in the room, is um, what just happened this past week with GameStop stock. What just happened, and I don't need to recap it because we've probably already heard the story a million times, but what just happened is making us ask some very important questions as a society, as an investing society, and as just a everyday uh, American society, which is making us qu ask questions on censor censorship, um, on regulations, on the business models of these brokerages, um, especially you know brokerages that sell order flow to other firms, um, brokerages that allow uh, hedge funds and other prime brokers to actually increase their short float over 100%, which is a huge issue. A short flow of being over 100% is basically selling something that doesn't exist. Now, actually, I don't have a problem with short selling like a, like a lot of other folks do, but I do have a problem with short floats being over 100% because you shouldn't be able to sell something that doesn't really exist. And obviously, like things get broken um, when you sort of tilt towards the extremes, right? We've seen that throughout our history. Um, a lot of leverage leads to some pretty chaotic endings, I would say. Um, and look, I don't know the complete narrative with um, with exactly what happened here. There's a lot that doesn't really make sense to me. I know people kind of love the narrative of, hey, it's these brokers that are protecting the big guys. Um, I think in some cases, it's just like incompetency versus like, you know, just siding with the bigger guys. I think some, some brokerages really had their hands tied, uh, which is a completely separate discussion. Um, I'm just saying like there's a lot that doesn't really make sense to me, so I can't really for my opinion one way or another. So I'm not going to speak on that. Um, but I will speak on the fact that this particular community is kind of leading us in that direction um, to ask the right questions as a society and kind of bring light to everything, right? We've never really heard of a group of people taking down a big guy because the amount of new investors that have become investors um, has been unprecedented recently. And it's all because of social media. And so long term, I think like um, social media popularizes a lot of things, um, things like voting, for example, voting is pretty important for, for a democracy. And um, a lot of people share on social media that they vote. Um, and so that is kind of like a positive feedback loop because more people see that, more people vote, more people post it on social media. And the same can be said about investing. Now, there is an issue with um, poor financial education, but uh, you know, assuming that it's a it's a sales funnel almost assuming it's a funnel right where a lot more people are, are now entering this funnel yeah some people might be misled by some miseducation you know and, and it happens right so those people um they exit the funnel but there are going to be some people that remain and the funnel gets smaller and smaller but at at the end of it you have some pretty conf confident investors and there's going to be a lot more confident investors and first-time investors um, over the coming decades. And we just think about, you know, this this colossal movement that I'm not saying Wall Street Bets is responsible for, um, but certainly, like, it is both the fuel and the fire. This exact subreddit is both the fuel and the fire for a lot of 
um, monumental changes in society. And, and so, yeah, so I truly respect Wall Street Bets. They bring me such joy. The memes on Wall Street Bets are like top notch. It's like trying to buy some products straight from the farmers in Colombia of Pablo Escobar himself. It is just like high quality to the max. And, um, and again, you know, the last thing I'll say is on other investing communities, just because you, re you regurgitate something that Warren Buffett said, or you regurgitate all these like sayings, like past performance doesn't equal future performance, blah, blah, blah. Just because you say all that doesn't make you intelligent. It just, you know, makes you like an obedient, I wouldn't say sheep, but like there's, there, I do have an issue with people regurgitating things and not really fully understanding the scope of them and then taking that and then looking down on people that don't do that. Um, and so, yeah, what, you know, what I said about early, uh, Wall Street Bets earlier is like the, the acceptance of crazy ideas, I think, is, is awesome. So, yeah, shout out to Wall Street Bets. This has been a crazy week and highly entertaining. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think of the situation. Are you guys fans of Wall Street Bets? Um, let me know. And, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video.